At the same time, what came to mind is a sort of bit of advice an editor gave me years ago, which is whistleblowers are usually a little nuts. And so you often have to, with whistleblowers, factor in um, that there's going to be some amount of, uh, of unusual material uh, in whatever, <laughs> whatever outcry you receive. But that doesn't mean that they're not right about something. Um, and so I thought, well, uh, you got to go to Uncle Ted, right? I mean, like, he's someone who would know. He was, at that point, already chastised. Um, so then it was just a matter of finding him. Uh, and trying to talk to him. At that time, his spokespeople were saying that he was too ill uh, to receive visitors and to really converse coherently. Uh, that seemed kind of funny to me because I had someone who showed me text messages from him in June saying, hey, some stuff's about to come out, so my birthday party's off. He seemed <laughs> um, pretty lucid. Um, and so um, I started asking people like, hey, do you know where McCarrick is? He can't be too far from here. Uh, and, you know, and then it was a matter of getting parish property records and seeing that there were only a few properties that matched what people had heard. And then uh, I figured out where he was at about 9 o'clock one evening. And so we put our kid in the car seat. My husband drove me over there and um, waited in the car filming um, when I went up and knocked on the door and, of course, got Bishop Dorsonville, which is what I thought, um, gave him my card and said, you know, I'd like to speak to... Theodore McCarrick. He's, yeah, how do you know he's here? And I was like, well, that's a giveaway. <laughs> uh, so, um, which is something that's common with the cover up in the church is that the cover up's happening poorly. Keystone cover up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it's a keystone cover up through yeah. and through. And so I said, you know, okay, well, I'll be back tomorrow. And I came back the next day, and that was when the archdiocese called the post and was like, you know, this is threatening and frightening. And, um, and of course, it was me with my backpack. But your, your husband is a large, you know, he's a substantial man. So Matt wasn't there the next day, right? Okay. This, yeah, six foot three guy with the two year old in the back. Um, <laughs> it's the two year old that really anyway. terrifies. On a, that is a kind of threat. Yeah, we're going to let this kid in the house. Um, <laughs> but I mean, even then, it was very sad. I mean, it, was, it, was, it wasn't a triumphant, uh, I didn't feel good about it, right? Um, I was standing on the doorstep, I knocked, I rang the doorbell. Um, and I waited, and I said, you know, I'm just going to wait here because that's the advice Bob Woodward gave me. Um, and you can oftentimes outweigh people into something um, that'll give you more information about what you're trying to understand. And I had a letter I wanted to hand deliver, and I didn't want to mess with the mailbox because you can get in big trouble that way. And um, the a nurse came, and she was like, you know, it's time for her appointed time to, I guess, deal with McCarrick. And she knocked, and they thought it was me, and they wouldn't come to the door. And I kind of panicked. I was like, I don't want McCarrick to not be able to see his nurse. Right? I'm not trying to like, interfere with his health care. Um, it doesn't have to be that way, right? I mean, and, and I, I wish there was some way I could have made it clear that it wasn't me knocking anyway she left. And I mean, I hated it. I hated it more than anything. And I left shortly after that. And it was a... a Pyrrhic defeat, right? After that, they moved him out to Virginia for a little bit and then up to Kansas. And I knew where he was in Virginia and I told the diocese, I still know where he is. Uh, I'd still like to talk to him. They invited me to submit the, my questions in writing and I did and I had no thought that they would ever be answered and they haven't been. Um, but it just creates a lot of bad blood with you know, me and the archdiocese, which is incidentally, you know, my archdiocese, where I take my kid for mass, uh, is a place where, you know, where I had her baptized, where my carrick lived for a while in the rectory. Um, but I, I keep thinking, you know, you can make it all go away. Just tell the truth, right? Anytime you're in a situation that's like this, where every single move makes things somewhat worse, usually what you need to do is own up and tell the truth. Um, and I think that uh, it's only going to continue to increase in, in moral costs as long as that solution is put off.